Well, today I want to share with you um, a webinar on how to raise funds through Coswox. Lately, we've been talking a lot about how the coronavirus has really changed fundraising plans for a lot of nonprofits. We also talked about on Friday, we had our education manager, Candace Cody, talk about some of the strategies and best practices on how you can transition your offline fundraising to digital fundraising. So if you missed that, just go to our website. I'll post this in the chat as well. Uh, it's a free recording, feel free to check it out. Very much based on strategy, 90 something slides. It's a lot of great content. Today, I wanna take that a little deeper and actually go down into the more tactical level on how you can actually raise funds through digital fundraising, as well as how you can leverage Cosvox to help make that happen. And next slide. So my name is Rob Wu, founder and CEO of Cosvox. Just a little bit about me. I started Cosvox 11 years ago with my uh, friend, Jeff. Jeff is the CTO of Cosvox, who leads our product team, does an amazing job doing that, building some of the best in class fundraising tools for nonprofits. 11 years ago, we wanted to start a fundraising platform because nonprofits had a hard time raising money and nonprofits didn't know how to do that digitally and online. Fast forward 11 years later, here we are sitting here today, and we've seen the transformative effect of how a lot of nonprofits are adopting digital fundraising so quickly, how they're adapting their programs, and how they're adapting their fundraising plans in order to raise more funds. So super excited to share with you. Um, a little bit about what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, it's a pretty simple plan. Um, I wanna make sure we have a lot of time at the end for Q&A, so watch out for that. But what we're gonna talk about is, you know, what Cosvox, uh, what does our company do? You know, what is this fundraising platform? Second, I wanna talk about what is digital fundraising? You know, why is it important, the concepts of it, and the different layers of it, I think it would be interesting to talk about. From there, uh, we'll go through some actual examples of digital fundraising happening right now. So we have a bunch of organizations running uh, COVID-19 coronavirus focused fundraising campaigns. Some of them I want to share and there's some other ones unrelated to the coronavirus I want to share as well. Just so you get a glimpse of how you can take a similar concept and build it into your fundraising plan. Uh, from there, uh, we'll love to do a little bit briefly on how we can set up a, a similar fundraising campaign or similar donation page for your organization, as well as some best practices. Then lastly, uh, we can talk about pricing too, uh, and how we have different types of pricing, all budgets, we have a free option, which is great, it's free, uh, as well as some more full service options as well. All righty. So Coswox, uh, we are a digital fundraising platform for nonprofits. What this really means for you is we are a fundraising software that helps you go out there and raise funds. So typically fundraising software is really clunky, it's hard to use, you're bound by contracts, and it's expensive. But for us, we're the total opposite. Our platform is super easy to use. We provide excellent support, as well as you can run any type of digital fundraising that you want without any clutter like donation pages, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer. -peer. You can do that through our platform all in one place. Uh, one of the things we offer are donation forms. So a lot of times when we look at nonprofit donation forms, they're not really happy with them because it's clunky, it's hard to use, doesn't look professional. But for ours, we design our donation forms with the donor in mind. We wanna make sure they have the best experience. So what we do is we take some e-commerce best practices, look at Amazon, look at Best Buy, look at Target, figure out some of the best things about how their e-commerce process works. And we actually take that and build it into our donation form so that any size nonprofit can have the most modern fundraising tools available for them. Uh, we also allow you to do crowdfunding. So a lot of the new campaigns on our platform today when it comes to coronavirus fundraising is a crowdfunding campaign where organizations are creating lit pages and key pages for their fundraising initiatives so that they can tell a story elicit an emotional response and generate donations more so than just directing their folks to a general website or donation form. Then very lastly, you can also use Cosvox for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So this is a, a donor acquisition technique they can use for digital fundraising. It's not just for runs, walks, races. You can actually use this for any type of online fundraising where you're leveraging your volunteers, your board members, your supporters, to create personal crowdfunding pages so that they can share their story and your story at the same time in order to drive more traffic 
and donations to your cause and nonprofit. So that's Causevox in a nutshell. We'll definitely talk a little bit more about that later on, or you can go to our website, causevox.com. You can browse um, and we'll have time for questions on Causevox as well. So um, instead of what's next, digital fundraising, because I don't want to set the stage for everybody here of um, why fundraising is important, you know, what are the components of it, and what doesn't work when it comes to fundraising today. So digital fundraising isn't just a channel. It's a combination of having a great infrastructure and a great process for your fundraising. So it's really about creating the infrastructure. You know, when sometimes when people build roads, if the roads don't connect, or there's, if there's no off-ramp or off-ramp to a road, then the whole road is useless. So that's the same thing with fundraising where you have to think intentionally about what, what is the foundation and structure you have for digital fundraising in order for you to really succeed when it comes to raising funds online. If you don't have an infrastructure, then really you're just cobbling things together. And one day, the whole thing will just fall apart. So we're seeing a lot of organizations where they run their fundraising on a project by basis without a solid foundation. And when the coronavirus hits, their whole fundraising plans are just thrown out the window. So in order to overcome that problem, think about having a digital fundraising stack. So it's a combination of basically different pieces that help set your infrastructure up in a way that allows you to grow and scale your fundraising. So the first piece that you want when it comes to digital funding is having a high performance form. Now, I'm not talking about like the forum that uh, is from like the mid 90s. I'm not talking about fundraising is an afterthought to the conversion process for your donors. It's having a donation form that has the best in class fundraising tools that allows you not to inspire donors, but also just to convert them when they hit your donation form. So it has one time and recurring donations as well and, in, and an impact focus. The next step of your next stack of your digital fundraising stack is having the ability to run campaigns. So a lot of times when we work with smaller organizations, they have a donation form, but they don't have the concept of having a campaign focus. So what this means is when you're running your fundraising, a lot of folks are just directing people to a generic donation form. The problem with this is that you're not able to measure how well your digital techniques are translating to donations if you're just directing everybody into one door. Now, to overcome that, and what we'll go over a little bit more, is the ability to create different type of campaign landing pages. So you can direct folks to a specific fundraising campaign or fundraising program in order for them to be compelled to make a donation. The other stack is peer-to-peer. -peer. So peer-to-peer -peer is the best donor acquisition tool for nonprofits when it comes to digital. Peer-to-peer -peer is a way for you to rally your supporters and your donors to create these personal crowdfunding pages in order to go out there, share your story, get more social awareness, and, uh, and at the end of the day, to get more donations to your cause. Then very lastly, as part of your digital fundraising stack, is being able to communicate out this infrastructure, which is through email and social media. Uh, we are building additional email tools into Cosvox. We do have some today, and this part is maturing on our platform. So once you have an infrastructure, once you have this stack that has, um, has the right tools, has the, the right functionality, then what you want to do um, is, where are we? Ah, then what you want to do is have the right process. So this is what we call the digital fundraising cycle. So instead of running fundraising as a stop and go, instead of running your fundraising as always fighting a fire or planning a gala, figuring out table seatings, digital fundraising is more of a process than a project. So the first step is on the upper left hand here where you wanna attract and build your audience. So this is through web traffic, through posting on your blog, through posting on social media, just getting enough traffic, measurable traffic on your website or your assets in order to generate an audience. The next step after this is once you have an audience, you wanna nurture them. So nurture them through your storytelling, through videos, or nurture them through one-on-one -on -one engagement and phone calls and emails. Then lastly, it's about conversion. So once folks are nurtured, then actually driving them to uh, 
a donation form, a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, or a crowdfunding campaign to convert them into a donor. Now, this isn't a linear process where it's just one, two, three, and then that's it. It's a cyclical process where you always are attracting, nurturing, converting, and then after converting, you're always trying to build more audience to nurture that new audience and to convert that audience. Uh, one thing to note too, this it isn't just about new audiences, it's also about your existing supporters. So being a good uh, donor steward and, and telling your existing donors the impact that they've created as uh, individuals. Uh, we're also seeing one thing that's really interesting here where with COVID, we've seen an increased growth of this convergence. So we call this the great convergence of how the best fundraisers need to become the best marketers and the best marketers at a nonprofit need to become the best fundraisers. So pre-COVID, kind of the overlap was about this much over here. Post-COVID, we've seen an overlap happen at a greater pace where the tool sets and skill sets of a fundraiser needs to borrow from a digital marketer and the tool sets and skill sets of a marketer needs to borrow from a great development shop. So something that's really interesting, something to keep in mind as you move forward with your fundraising plans. Now, now that you've seen what kind of infrastructure works, what kind of process works, I really wanna go over what actually doesn't work, just kind of point things out. So what doesn't work and what we've seen are a lot of cancellations, a lot of postponements when it comes to in-person events. This just doesn't work right now, nor do we think it's gonna work later this year. The reason why is because of this, everybody is gonna be wearing a face mask. It's not just the face mask issue, it's actually what the face mask means. It means that people may not want to come together. And when it comes to fundraising events, when the cost of fundraising is about 50%, which means $50 on every $100 you raise, it puts your fundraising initiative greatly at risk. If you can't fill your fundraising event with enough seats, people on seats or you can't fill them with major donors. So we think fundraising events, not a good thing to do, especially because a lot of these venues may not be around in a few months. The next thing that's not gonna work are auctions. And the reason why is because typically what you auction off are things and experiences. Well, the story is nobody is traveling today and probably nobody is traveling tomorrow. And it's gonna to be hard for people to travel when it comes to the fall or winter when we see the second wave uh, that the CDC is predicting. Uh, when you look at the news, you can see another issue with auctions is that their retailers and small businesses are having a huge problem. So you see here uh, in uh, 10 years ago in an 08 recession, um, the sales for a lot of retailers dropped by about four to 5%. We see in a March 2020, they dropped by 8.7%, which is twice as much as the 2008 recession. So what this means for you is that it's gonna be hard for you to get stuff for your auctions, for, for your retailers to donate physical items to your nonprofit for your auction. If you don't have the item for your auction, then it becomes very difficult from that supply side. In addition to that, 7.1 million small businesses are at risk of closing. So you have a big headwind against the success of your auction because a lot of businesses are not going to donate to your uh, fundraiser. Something else that's not gonna work when it, because more and more fundraising is digital, as well as because in-person events are not happening, is text to give. I actually received an email from one of my favorite nonprofits this morning. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know why, but they wanted me to, so I got an email that said, hey, you should donate now by texting uh, ABC to this random short code number. The issue with this is that it is not sensitive to me as a donor in terms of where I'm reading this message. I'm reading this message through email. The fastest way for me to make a donation is just to click on a link to make a donation. It's not for me to pull on my phone and, and kind of open up my iMessage browser, uh, pack in five digits in terms of a short code and then ABC and then send that, wait for it, and then click on a message. So uh, nonprofits that I've talked to haven't seen text to give work in the past. And I think with these trends, it's not gonna work in the future. What does work is when you just give someone a link, have them click on it so they can easily make a donation. All right, 
very lastly here, um, this is just to show you in terms of the cost of fundraising and ROI. I think one of the opportunities here is that when it comes to benefits and events, typically it takes $50 to raise $100. The great thing about not doing in-person events and doing more digital fundraising is the cost of fundraising is just around 3% for every $100 you raise. So you can save a lot of budget and you have this opportunity to actually raise a lot more. All right. So um, that's my rant on digital fundraising. Let's actually go through some examples of digital fundraising on Coswox uh, right now. So let me share my other screen. Of course, if you all have any questions at any time, feel free to chat it in. I may weave in some answers to those questions I was, we're talking, or we'll just save it to the end. All right, so I just share my other screen here. All right, great. So this is just the Coswox website. Uh, many of you have seen this before. Otherwise, I'm not sure how you would have signed up for this webinar. Uh, but uh, thanks for signing up again. I want to show you kind of a few things here uh, in terms of the Coswox platform. So the Coswox platform, what helps you do is it helps you take um, the, the best practices of digital fundraising and actually plug in not only the infrastructure for your nonprofit this year, the digital fundraising infrastructure, but also helps you with creating that cycle of fundraising so you can raise more with less effort. So uh, let's go through a few examples. These are in no particular order. Uh, I'd love to just kind of talk through them, show you what it looks like, show you what it, I like about them, and just basically have a quick discussion. So one of the ones that we seem to be pretty interesting of a concept is the ability to do campaign sites. So on Coswox, you can create as many campaign sites as you want to. The benefit of this is that you can have something really tailored to your story. So instead of just directing folks to a donation form, directing something to folks to something like this. So on a Coswox platform, you can actually create campaign sites easily with an IT person, uh, no web design developer. So what this really means is you can get set up with digital fundraising very quickly, the same day, it can raise funds the same day as well. You don't have to work with your web volunteer or your IT person in order to get set up. So the North Texas Food Bank, one of our customers, they set up a couple different campaign sites. So this is one called the Virtual Food Drive, where they set up, so you start with the template, and then customize it, make it look like and feel like their own brand. And from there, they can easily put in a fundraising goal, as well as keep track of that fundraising goal in real time. Uh, this way, people who visit your campaign site can see how much has been raised against the total, and then they can be compelled to make a donation. On top of that, you can put in a day's remaining counter, which counts down automatically for you, um, so you can create more urgency for your donors. Uh, what I really like about this page is that it's completely branded to North Texas Food Bank, so it looks more professional than just directing folks to a generic campaign site. Um, in addition to that, one of the pieces that I really like as well is just the this ability to have persistent navigation. So one of the pieces of Coswox that we focus on a lot is instilling digital marketing best practices. So how that really looks like on our platform is this persistent CTA. This donate button over here on the right just never goes away. It's always there, as well as the share button is always there. So no matter where someone is reading your story, they're able to find a donate button and click on that to make a donation. So I really love that part. Another part, uh, this is a different one over here, a smaller campaign. So they're working with one of their corporate sponsors called, I can never pronounce this, I'm gonna butcher this, but I think it's Polarant, Polarant, yeah. So arguably this name is harder to say than Coswox, which is really hard to say already. So uh, they're working with this company called Colorant. So uh, one of the parts that I think is really valuable as a best practice is when you're thinking about fundraising moving forward, you can think about what kind of corporate sponsors do you have, uh, what kind of companies that you work with, and do a co-branded fundraising campaign site with them so that not only can they attach their logo to that campaign site and then kind of get some promotional credit for it, but then they can use that and share that with their networks, with their employees, as a way to engage their employees during this time of crisis. So North Texas Food Bank, they have the same kind of format on top, but then they created a customized uh, campaign site just for Colorant in order to do their fundraising. So really love that ability. So it's a branded page, but it's co-branded to the organization. Uh, another one that I want to share over here, this is Skid Row Housing Trust. Uh, they're a nonprofit based in LA. And 
I like this piece over here. This is also a campaign site that you can create on Cosbox. It's branded to the organization, but they focus their fundraising um, on a matching grant. So matching grants typically work really well when it comes to a short-term fundraising campaign. So they created this on Cosbox as well. Uh, one of the pieces I really like a lot is their ability just to share the story. So on Cosbox, you can put any type of content you want to, any type of story. Uh, it could be just a text story with different headings, uh, or what you can do is you can even put in uh, different photos and images in order to illustrate how you're doing your fundraising. Um, one of the pieces that works really well with this is that this is like an emergency fundraising campaign. So they easily spun this up within a day or two uh, in order to raise funds for some of their frontline workers. So I think this is a great idea where you can easily spin up these campaign sites as fast as you want to in order to drive donors to your fundraising campaign. Um, here's a different one too. Here's Global Friends Foundation. Uh, one of the pieces I really like about their Cosbox campaign site is that not only are they kind of focusing in on how much needs to be raised, but actually what they're doing is they're counting the amount of impact that needs to be created as well. So instead of just saying, hey, we need to raise $10,000, you're actually saying, hey, we've raised 6,600 life-saving PPEs, personal protective like equipment. Uh, they're raising funds for these masks over here. So it provides donors a way to understand, okay, my dollar, every dollar that I donate will go so far. So um, I can fund 10 masks or I can fund 20 masks. So this way you can weave together the story of impact the relative to the donor dollar. So uh, that's a piece that's really unique about Cosbox where we help you really tell your story in a way where it is tracked by the metrics and not just focused on the money. Uh, in addition to that, what I really like the page, about the page is that they not only tell people that, about the relevantness of this campaign, it's about COVID-19, but they're actually raising funds to help out some of their uh, folks uh, abroad that they have programs at. So they raise funds for PPEs over there. And then very lastly here that I like is that their ability just to put in more of a custom impact story on the bottom here. All right, so here's another one over here that's kind of that's similar. So what they've done over here through Cosbox is they created a campaign site. It's peer-to-peer -peer focused. Um, but what's different about this is that they've taken a existing kind of gala concept about uh, having table captains raise funds for a gala, and they applied it directly online. So you can do this too, uh, where this is a virtual fundraiser. So um, you can have your... On Cosbox, you can put in your logo, put in your, like a video as well. And if I scroll down a lot, um, what I really like about this is they're putting in different videos, uh, similar to any type of offline uh, event. Uh, they have different levels of giving, like a gold level, bronze level. So these are concepts that tie directly to something that is more traditional, like a gala fundraising. So you can easily do this on a platform as well. But then they have what, what what we have over here, of course, are virtual table captains. So just like before in their existing fundraising plan where they would have to recruit fundraising uh, table captains for the gala, uh, they're having everybody just do this online. So uh, this is Mark's virtual table. He was able to go in here and create a personal fundraising page for this. So he was able to upload a photo, put in his name, and then tell a personal story about him and how he loves service dogs in order to send it out to his friends and family and drive donations to his personal page. So this is something you can easily do through our platform. What we found is that organizations that use like this type of fundraising, they tend to raise twice as much as organizations just doing crowdfunding. So this is a great way not only for you to rally your base, but also to generate more donations and new donors. Um, here's a different example here. Uh, this is Echo. Um, so one of the things that I really like about this one, where they were able to brand it, so this is the Cosbox platform, but in terms of a strategy, so this is more of a strategy than a product thing, where they're asking folks that they have the opportunity to actually donate some of their stimulus checks. So as a lot of folks are getting their stimulus checks this week to $1,200, uh, they can actually pledge that amount and donate it directly to this fundraising campaign. So interesting fundraising idea in order to generate donations. On top of that too, one of the things that I would recommend for them is also just saying that, hey, as part of the CARES Act, uh, people can deduct $300 top of the line uh, when it comes to reducing uh, as a charitable deduction. 
Uh, here's a different example here where you're taking an offline event into more online when it comes to digital fundraising. Uh, so uh, they're doing like a bachelor auction. Um, and then what they're doing is they're getting all the guys to create these personal pages uh, as a way to drive donations to your personal page. So this is something you can easily do for any type of virtual fundraising. It applies to a lot of virtual concepts, virtual galas, et cetera, that you can bring on to more of a digital concept very easily without, without a lot of lift and just having a place and a destination for your supporters to do it online. All right. So a lot of examples over here that I just went over. I also do want to go over, uh, let's go over some donation form examples. So let me see if we can find one that I want to share. All right. So here's the Charles Candelera Memorial Foundation. So one of the things you can do with Cosvox, we're talking a lot about crowdfunding and peer-to-peer, -peer, kind of the two stacks up top. Let's talk about kind of your foundational stack, which is your donation form on our platform. So with Cosvox, we make donation forms really easy. It's just two steps. It has a donor in mind um, in order to convert them to make a donation. So donors can go to your donation form. They can select from a one-time gift or a monthly recurring gift. And this can be optional. You can choose to customize your Cosbox donation form in any way that you want to. And then folks can put in, can select from different suggested levels of giving. So uh, one of the benefits here is that you can customize these levels of giving. It can even add a description here so it ties directly to impact when it comes to your, um, your cause. From here, uh, donors are just taken to the second step, so easy two-step process. One of the parts that I really like about our donation forms is that we have this concept of smart forms, where if you're a returning donor, that your information is already pre-filled on your donation form. So, what happens here is that all your returning donors on, that come back to your donation form in the future, or even to your peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding sites, they already have all their donor information pre-filled. So what this means is that you can actually help donors reduce the time it, makes, the time it takes to make a donation by 80%, as well as reduce the number of steps it takes them to make a donation by 60%. So this way donors can go through and they can make a donation in 15 seconds, without having to go through a long process. So uh, one of the things I recommend for all of y'all to do is basically go to your donation form you have today if you have one and just kind of time yourself in terms of how long it takes to make a donation. You don't have to go through the whole process, just kind of the first few steps. Actually kind of go in and see how long it takes and compare that to the 15 second benchmark. If you can, if you can do it under 15 seconds, then you don't need to use Cosbox. I guarantee that you shouldn't use our platform. But if you can't do it, uh, within 15 seconds, then one of the benefits that you'll be able to realize is through our donation forms where you can easily convert a donor within 15 seconds. All right, and lastly here, donors can go in and enter in the credit card number to make a donation. Uh, we do have Apple Pay and Google Pay integrated as well, so that's something that donors can easily go through um, and use in order to make a donation too. So I really love that part. All right, so we also do have other examples here. So with our Cosvox donation pages, so I can't find, I have too many tabs open. All right, so with the Cosvox donation pages, all right, here we go. Uh, not only can you do kind of like the, the freestanding one that I showed you, but you can also uh, embed them directly on a page so that when someone navigates to your website, then they can easily go in and make a donation. It's an easy two-step process. You notice that my name is always saved here just because uh, I've donated on to a Cosvox donation form before. I'll be a horrible CEO of Cosvox if I haven't. And also you can uh, make your donation form a pop-up donate button here that pops up as a modal or as a link too. So a lot of different customization options, a lot of personalization options uh, for you to run your fundraising. All right. So we went over a lot of examples here. If you do have any questions, feel free to chat it in. I'm gonna break real fast and get some of these questions and answers that are here. And I'm gonna jump into some of the backend interface of Cosbox. So a few questions, uh, Gene Ray's asking, is this gonna be available? Um, wait, is a slideshow and or video available on the fundraising pages? So yes, the short answer is yes. So on your fund campaign sites, over here, you can put in an image or you can put in a video matter. It's up to you. Uh, if I go to this example here, uh, they have a video for their campaign site. And that's the same thing for these personal pages. These personal pages, um, folks can put in an image 
but it can also put in a slideshow, they can embed that, or they can put in a photo, or they can put in a video as well. So all the customizable is multimedia. Uh, we, and these customizations options help them tell their story. All right, uh, we have another question come in is, can different campaign pages accommodate different donation amounts? So yes, I, well, when you go to your campaign site, so this is one over here, um, a couple of different things in terms of how this question can be interpreted, but you can set your own fundraising goal. So whatever you want, it can be whatever amount you want. And for your donate button, you can have different tiers of giving that can be any amount as well. So you can set these donation tiers up yourself. It could be any amount that you want to suggest to your donors, uh, and they can select from different amounts or type in a custom amount of their own. All right. A couple of the questions that are coming in. Um, someone's asking, uh, does a fundraising organization have to be a 501c3 or a municipality? So uh, at Coswox, you don't have to be a 501c3 to use a platform. You can be any type of organization. You can be a company, a small business. But most of our customers are nonprofits, so either 501c3 or 501c4, um, but we don't restrict access to anybody to use a platform. So anyone can use it anywhere in the world. All right. Um, another question we have is, is there a limit to how many campaign landing pages each charity client can have? So no, there's not. So even on our free plan, you can have as many campaign sites as you want to, as well as as many fundraising pages as you want to. So there's no limits. All right. And one other question before we dive into the back end is, uh, does Coswox handle the donations? If not, what credit card processor do you recommend? So. Fantastic question about the back end. So Cosbox, we partner with a donation processor called Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E, as well as another donation processor called PayPal. So what you'll do when you set up your Cosbox campaign sites, which I'll show you in just a second, is you'll go in and then when you're setting things up, you'll plug in your Stripe account or you plug in your PayPal account. And this will allow you to take donations and those donations will be found directly in one of those two accounts, which automatically transfers into your bank account on a rolling basis. Great. Awesome. So let me show you the back end real fast. Um, as I'm going over this, or if you all have any other questions, feel free to chat it in. I'll be happy to, to get to those in just one minute. All right. So uh, let me show you kind of two things. Uh, one is how to set up a donation form and how to set up a campaign site. So a donation form, looks like this. This is a freestanding one uh, that can either sit by itself or sit on your website like a donate button. So if you want to create something like this, uh, you'll just go into your Cosvox admin account. Uh, you'll find the create new button here on the upper right hand side. When you get to the screen over here, there are a couple of different options for you. So what you want to do is that you want to click on donation pages because we want to create a donation page and you'll figure out if you want to use website donations or a monthly giving. Monthly giving basically just it is like website donations, but then it adds on recurring uh, functionality, recurring donation functionality. So let's do that. Let's keep it simple with website donations. And we'll just type in Rob's donation page. So everything is guided on Cosbox. So once you uh, enter that in, um, you basically have a flow of how you can set things up. So my donation page has a title now. I have a link over here uh, that's customized, but I can easily change that if I want to. And let me just put in my contact info. Uh, this contact info is shown on the donate form. But you can change any of this at any time. So that's the first step. Uh, the second step is you'll want to connect your Stripe account or connect your PayPal account. Um, I already have one of our accounts connected, so I just select that. If I'm based in the US, then I go over the USD option. If you're Canadian based, which a lot of our customers are, then you can just select Canadian dollars here. From here, I'll just customize my donation tier. So these are the amounts that show up on your donation form. So if I go back to this one over here, you'll notice that there's $5, $10, $20, $35, and et cetera. So you can choose to have the same amounts or you can just use the default ones over here and then you can customize this. So um, let's say if I'm a food bank, that this feeds uh, 10 people, feeds 10 people. Okay. So that can make this more impact focused. So then I have descriptions as part of this. 20, 
And then let's go with, I can't do math right now. So let's just say 100. Um, we also have this option for donation tipping. So tipping allows donors to help cover your fees for you. So that when you're using Cosbox, then they're adding basically an additional three to 5% to their donation so that you can use Cosbox fee free if you're on one of our paid plans. So if you wanna have that, you can enable it, then you can change whatever that percentage is. Some additional options here um, that I'm gonna kind of skip because it's probably not important. But one thing that is important is your donation receipt. So we automatically send donation receipts out for you at Cosbox. So every time a donor makes a donation, they get an automatic donation receipt via email automatically. And then I can customize this over here. So once I'm happy with that, it takes me to my design editor. Uh, on the right hand side, you have a live preview of your donation form uh, through different devices. For example, this is a more of a mobile device, more of a tablet over here, then more of a desktop. Um, I can easily go in and let's say I wanna change the header uh, to more of a gray, then I can easily do that. I can remove the Cosbox logo and upload one of my own. So I can easily just design this to make it more of my own. Once I'm happy with this, then this takes me to one of the last steps, uh, which is basically if I wanted to embed my donation form on my website, like a pop-up or a link, then I can use some of these codes over here and put it into my website to do that. Now, if I don't want to do that, if I just want to have a link, then I don't have to worry about that step. I can just skip it. And now my donation page is complete. So when I go to my donation page here and what pops up, you'll see that I just created my first donation form within about five minutes or so. And the donors can actually make a donation on this form right now. So super fast, super easy in order to create a donation form. All right. Uh, if you all have any questions on donation forms, feel free to put it into the chat. Be happy to answer those. We do have one question that came in, or a few questions actually. Um, one is, uh, do we have to set up our Stripe or PayPal account separately? Um, so on Cosbox, we only do one or the other right now. So either you have to plug in your Stripe account, or you can select to plug in your PayPal account, one or the other. My personal recommendation, we don't get any type of referrals or anything, is I recommend Stripe if you have that, or if you don't have one, you can easily set one up through Cosbox, uh, because it does allow you to have Apple Pay and Google Pay integration directly, automatically on our donation forms. Also does allow for recurring donations on Cosbox too. Uh, another question that we had come in is, how often does Cosbox inform a nonprofit organization of donations received. Okay, and what kind of data? So this is a great lead into um, our management interface. So on Cosbox, when you log in, um, you have a manage tab here. If you're trying to see who your donors are, you'll just go to the donations tab, you click on donations here, and we'll give you a listing of all your donors on your donation form or on your campaign site. I can click through into a donor, so I can see how much, Theodore over here has donated, his address. I can see all these donor info, his email address, so that's listed on this page. And then you can even export all this information into a CSV file. So you get full access to all your donor data on, on our platform, unlike other fundraising initiatives, unlike other fundraising platforms. Uh, we have a question from Thomas asking, um, is there an option to leave a donor determined amount to give. So one of the ways that you'll do that is on your donation form, uh, we call these donation tiers, and then donors can select from different tiers of giving in order to make a recommended donation amount. Great, great questions, great questions. All right, so let's go over actually how to set up something different, which is something like a campaign site. So, you know, we, we went over some of these campaign sites over here, including some of the peer-to-peer. So let's take a look to see what it looks like to set one up on Cosbox. So it follows a similar process where you just wanna click on the create new over here. Uh, you'll select campaigns and depending on what kind of campaign you wanna do, crowdfunding or peer-to-peer -peer or some of the other options here, you'll just select from one of them. I'm gonna go with peer-to-peer. -peer, uh, so you just select the title. And you follow a similar process, just like the donation form when you set this up, except that there's a few additional options. So for example, you can set a fundraising goal. So this goal displays on your page and it populates a progress bar that happens in real time. And you can also set an end date too, as part of this. 
So you set up the general settings and similar to before, you take it into a design editor on this right hand side over here, which you can change some colors, make your own. Let's go dark over here. You can put in a video. You can even customize the text over here in terms of your button. So you can customize all this and put in your story. And once you're happy with how it looks on mobile as well as on desktop, uh, as well as tablet, uh, you can just go on to the next step. Uh, from here, we're just saying that you can turn on peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, this step is just like before, where you'll select your Stripe account, you'll plug it in, uh, you'll figure out how much donation tipping you want, and then your campaign site is complete. So this takes just a little longer than a donation form, but once you kind of go through these settings, and once you're happy with it, you can always launch your campaign. And once your campaign is launched over here, then it'll be live online, just like this. And donors can go in there, they can donate, as well as if you're running peer-to-peer, -peer, they can join your campaign by clicking on this join the campaign button here. So super easy to do. Um, so just as easy as creating a donation form. All right. Um, so creating your Cosvox campaign sites is really easy. Um, we have a few other questions too. So someone's asking, are donor or postal mailing addresses included on the data? So yes, they are. So you notice here, if I go into one of my demo ones over here, when you navigate to your donations tab, for example, if I click on Lee over here, uh, if you are collecting postal addresses on your donation form or your peer-to-peer -peer campaign site or campaign or crowdfunding site, then uh, we will include a postal address for you to see. So we do have an option on Cosvox where if you don't want to collect postal addresses, then uh, the donor doesn't see all the postal address fields, it helps them go through the process a lot quicker. But if you are collecting postal addresses, then uh, you will get access to this information. All right. Um, awesome. So let me see. Oh, one other question too that came in is, can one person set up several peer-to-peer -peer pages? Uh, this is a great question. So um, in terms of peer-to-peer -peer pages that happen, uh, when it comes to your campaign site, it could be only one peer-to-peer -peer page per email address on your campaign site. So what this means is that if someone wants to set up two fundraising pages on one campaign site, that they have to use two separate email addresses in order to set that up. If uh, you're asking if someone can set up a different peer-to-peer -peer page on a different campaign site, uh, and if they're one person, then yes, they can create a, a new personal fundraising page on a different campaign site that it, when they don't have one on that campaign site. All right. Great, so what we've seen today is a few examples of donation forms, a few examples of peer-to-peer, -peer, and also how easy it is in order to set one up. Um, what I wanna do next in our agenda is basically kind of just go over some of our pricing options here. So our pricing options are budget-friendly for a small, medium-sized organization. Um, a couple of different options here. Uh, we do have, our most popular option over here is called a standard plan. The standard plan comes on a month to month basis. So it's 185 a month on a month to month option, no contracts, no commitment. Uh, or you can opt into an annual contract for $1,674 a year. And this gives you full access to run your fundraising infrastructure all year long. Uh, we do charge a two to four and a quarter percent platform fee on the standard plan. So for, if you're running donation pages, it's just a 2% platform fee. If you're running crowdfunding or peer-to-peer, -peer, then it's four and a quarter percent platform fee. Uh, and this is online donations only, not offline donations. So the standard plan is great because it is our most popular plan. It gives you a lot of features. Um, it also does come with one-on-one -on -one support as well. So if you need some onboarding, uh, direct assistance, or phone support, then that's included with our standard plan. If you're raising over about $100,000 on our platform, then we would recommend our plus plan because this helps drop your peer-to-peer -peer fee uh, down to 3% instead of that four and a quarter percent. So basically this saves you a lot of money. Um, but if you're raising less than $100,000, then the standard plan would be probably the best fit. We do have other options too, like a light plan. So if you don't need that one-on-one -on -one service or onboarding, or if it doesn't fit your budget, you can actually go over the lighter version of our platform, which is just $85 a month, month to month, uh, or when you go annual, it's $660 a year, which is effectively $55 a month. 
Um, now, if you don't have any budget at all, then we do have an option called a basic plan. So this is a, one of the new things we released just a few weeks ago because of the coronavirus. And we're actually gonna keep this all year long. So there's no, uh, you don't have to worry about this disappearing. So the basic plan is completely free. So there's no monthly fee. Uh, there's no platform fee as well. So it's 100% free. The only thing that's really different about that is uh, since our platform is completely free, uh, we're operating on a tip model. So if your donors want to tip Cosbox a dollar or two here and there, uh, then they can then they can do that. Uh, so that's how we'll keep the lights on for you, um, even though you get to use the fundraising platform for free. So a couple of different options here. Um, obviously, the basic plan is really geared towards um, folks that um, are a social good project or don't have any budget. The light and light plan is really great for an organization uh, for for organization that needs donor data, that needs some additional features. And the standard plan is really good for organizations that want the one-on-one -on -one support or need to have something running up, up and running quickly uh, so they can tap into our success managers. All right, um, let me see. So that's our pricing. Let me go back to my slides, see what I have next over here. So we just went over some examples that are fundraising. Um, now, just to kind of summarize everything you've seen today, uh, what really works for digital fundraising are a couple of di five different best practices. One is that giving donors a fast 15 second donation process because everything is done online, done on your phones. You wanna make sure they can go through the process very quickly so they can complete their donations, which increases your conversion rates. Uh, having mobile payments helps support that. Uh, what you also wanna do for your donation form is have, have customization and flexibility so you look more professional as well as you have different options for taking donations online instead of just having one single clunky donation form. When it comes to campaign sites, you wanna make sure your campaign site is, is you can tailor it so that it matches your branding as well as it matches your style and your fundraising um, story uh, instead of just having something generic um, directed towards a transactional page. And then very lastly, just the ability just to plug in your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, so that you can acquire donors, leverage your supporters, and generate new donors and new donations to your organization very easily. Uh, you can fund this for free on Cosbox, um, as you saw on our basic plan. The one thing that I want to also announce is this is just to folks on this webinar, so we're not really promoting this to our list um, right now, is that if you sign on to one of our uh, light standard plus just any of our paid plans. We are offering 50% off the annual plans over there. So we're basically just offering up at cost. Just because a lot of organizations come to us and saying, "Hey, we'd love to use like more full feature. We need more support. We can't afford it." So one of the things we're offering is 50% off. So five zero. It's basically half the price. So whatever number is I told you earlier just divide by two, and that gives you the pricing for some of our paid plans. If you wanna take advantage of this, feel free to email me directly, um, which I'll po uh, post in this chat over here, and I'll make sure to set you up with that discount. All right. And lastly here, uh, I wanna just kinda of open up to any questions that uh, you have for the remaining time today. Uh, let me see, a couple different questions are coming in. So feel free to use the chat function or to use the Q&A function. Is Karen's asking, is the embed option available on the basic plan? So yes, it is. You can use the embed on the basic plan as well. So not only the direct embed, but you can use the pop-up embed as well as the, um, the button and link embed. Question we got coming in is how long does it take to get set up on Cosvox? Um, so as you all see, it's pretty easy. So it can typically it takes anywhere between one or two days, uh, just to be realistic. If you're a small team that where you don't have a lot of uh, approval processes, then you can get up the same day, uh, just as you see where I just went through the easy setup process and that allowed me to set up a donation form or a campaign site. Um, question coming in. So Bill's asking, on the basic, is data downloadable? So uh, on the basic plan, you do have access to your donor data. 
Um, but one of the things you are limited to is that with the basic plan, uh, you don't have the ability to download that data into a CSV file. So uh, where you'll find on our type table here. So you'll get the, the donor data um, on, a, uh, on, a, on an email notification as well as in the platform, but then you won't be able to download it into a spreadsheet. So what you'll have to do is just go in there and then figure out who your donors are and then copy and paste them into a spreadsheet yourself. Another question we have coming in, uh, let me see. Um, uh, this one is about email platforms and email newsletters. So yes, you can connect Coswox to your email newsletter. Um, one of the simple ways to do it is that you can just, when you're creating a newsletter, when you have like a button, uh, then you could just link to your Coswox campaign with that button. So you make sure you have the right link. Uh, so the link, how you'll find it is if you go to your campaign site, it's just this URL on top on a browser bar. So just copy and paste that into your newsletter and then that will allow donors to click on it in order to open up uh, a new browser window so they can make a donation. Uh, one of the shortcuts, let's see if this works. Oh, no, so it only works for donate buttons. Um, also what you can do is if you are Let's say you're, you have Coswox installed on your website. You know, one of the things that makes it really interesting it, when you're using more of the newsletter ba uh, based tools is that uh, once you have it installed on your website, you, if you include a hashtag donate on your website link, then it'll automatically pop up your donation form that's powered through Coswox. So when you're sending out a newsletter, instead of directing folks to your website and then telling them to click on donate, you can just say, click on this, and then it'll automatically open up the, uh, the donate form so they can just make a donation directly. It basically saves them a step instead of having them hunt down the donate button. Uh, another aspect of it too on Cosbox is with our standard plan and above, it does come with integrations. So if you wanted to integrate Cosbox data with like MailChimp or Constant Contact, for example, uh, then you can set one up where every time a donor makes a donation or a fundraiser creates a page, that their email address is sent over to your um, email newsletter software automatically. Great. Other questions are coming in. So uh, another question is, what browsers does Coswox not support? So we support all the major browsers that are updated. So Firefox, Chrome, Safari, um, Internet Explorer, uh, some of the newer versions, as well as uh, Microsoft Edge. Uh, we do support other ones too, uh, but our platform is optimized for Chrome, Safari, and uh, Firefox. Basically anything that Google supports, then we support as well. Great. Awesome. Um, it looks like I don't see any other questions coming in. So let's just end with this. So we also are running a free educa education series with kids. Um, so if you're stuck at home with your kids running around like crazy, or if you know somebody with crazy kids running around, we're hosting a free education series every Friday, 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, it's called Big Kid Drops. So if you want your kids to learn about different careers out there, for example, like how do you become a NASA engineer, or what does a geologist do, or what does a patrolling engineer do, then we're actually bringing on um, and hosting an education series of four kids to learn about some of those jobs. So uh, you can check that out. I'll include this link in a follow-up email that I sent all of you all. If you know anybody, feel free to sign up, it's free. Um, we have one of our friends of Coswox, Dr. Jenny Wang. She's a, a clinical psychologist, mother of two. Uh, we've had three sessions so far, it's been fantastic. So highly recommend it to all kids, uh, as well as all parents. So they can free up 30 minutes of their time and not go nuts. All right. So just to wrap things up, thank you so much for taking the time today to go over Coswox. Uh, we help you raise more with less effort. You can use Coswox for free, or as you've seen, for 50% off if you wanted to. Just let me know. I'll be happy to help. Uh, you can run donation forms, peer-to-peer, -peer, crowdfunding, your whole digital fundraising infrastructure off of our platform. If you have any questions or need help, 
feel free to ping me directly. I did paste in my email address into the chat. So feel free to, to, to ping me directly if you have any questions. Um, or if you uh, want to do more of a one-on-one -on -one demo to go over our platform, if you want to sign on to one of our paid plans, then let us know too. We're happy to get someone on our, our success team to walk through um, the platform. All right, well, thank you so much today for joining me. If you have any questions, let, me, let us know. And we hope to see you on Cosbox Raising Funds very soon. Thanks so much.